everybody. We're going to do some forecasting of financial data in Stata. Use it as the old crystal ball, right, to try to figure out what the market's going to do next. With the obvious disclaimer, this is for an exercise use only, uh, not to be used for trying to make money. The old joke, of course, if it actually worked, I wouldn't be here. Uh, but hey, who knows? Uh, but we'll get to see some, uh, some cool Stata commands, uh, play with some data. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. Uh, so again, the idea is out of sample forecasting for two different purposes, right? One, to optimize your model, right? Set it up as having some training data and then be able to evaluate the accuracy of your forecast. And then the true forward looking out of sample forecast, what's actually going to happen tomorrow. So before we get into it, uh, kind of a preview of the, the state of commands that we'll, that we'll be using here. Um, though we won't necessarily be explaining them all in great detail. Uh, we'll use the get symbols command to obtain our data from Yahoo Finance. We'll generate some simple returns. We'll declare our data set to be a time series telling Stata what we're doing. We will estimate an ARIMA model. So I'm assuming that you'll uh, have that information in terms of what an autoregressive integrated moving average model is and how to optimize it. Um, but we'll see an example of that. Then we'll use the dynamic prediction command in Stata to get that kind of bootstrapping X ante and X post forecasts. Uh, we'll adjust the dimensions of our data set to make room for some out of sample predictions. Uh, and then we'll do uh, some simple plotting to be able to evaluate the results. So here is the, the idea. When we think about forecasting right, in a regression model context, there's basically three ways we can do it. Now, every time you run a regression, right, you estimate a model, there is an in-sample forecast that is estimated. Those are the Y hat or predicted values, right? So all the observations that go into estimating your model are then predicted and forecasted to evaluate that model, right? So the whole idea of minimizing the sum of squared residuals is minimizing the in-sample forecast errors. The outside the sample options, we can do what's called the ex post out of sample forecast, which, yes, generates predicted values outside the range of observations used in estimation, but still within the realm of observable data. So this is what we can think of as using a portion of your sample, a portion of the available data as your training data, and then predicting the last number of observations right, that you can then compare to the actual outcomes. So you can generate a method of evaluation, optimize over this ex post period, then moving into the ex ante out of sample. And yes, it's always nice to be able to use Latin terminology, right? So ex post, after the facts, ex ante, before the fact or before the event. Um, so an ex ante out of sample prediction is using information before the fact to predict what is actually going to occur. So the ex ante out of sample uses every last scrap of available data right up to today to predict what's going to happen tomorrow. So obviously it's outside the observable range of data and you can't evaluate the accuracy of it until that time passes, right? Until you see what the markets do tomorrow. The, the visual, right? I always like to think about things visually. Uh, if we have an example we'll look at, we'll actually match this. So if we have an available sample of 255 observations, so here we're going to look at 255 daily observations of the S&P return, that is all the data that we have in our sample, basically right up to today. And the ex post forecasting idea, right, says, well, let's just scale that back a little bit. Let's save, say, the last five observations as this evaluation period, and we'll use the first 250 as our training data. Right? So what we would do, estimate our model over those 250 observations, and then make that ex post prediction, say, the last five observations. And this is where you're going to spend a lot of time, right? So you want to optimize your model over this training data. Keep doing it again and again and again until 
those five observations that you predict are as close as possible to the actual values in the sample. And then once you get that optimized, then you go beyond today, right? And make that ex ante out of sample forecast. Say what's gonna happen over the next week in the stock market. For example, that five observation window out of sample. You generally don't wanna go much beyond that. And actually a one period uh, out of sample forecast is probably as far as you're gonna to wanna to go. But that's kind of the exercise that we will take a look at. So let's jump into Stata and let's grab some data here. So we're gonna go get symbols. And I apologize for making you watch me type here. Um, trying to get typos to a minimum here. Uh, and the symbol that we are gonna get is GSPC. So a little carrot GSPC. So that is the S&P 500 index. And we're going to want to get, get this for the most recent year's worth of data, approximately. So we are here right now making this video in October 2020. Yeah, a lot going on. Um, we don't need to get into that. Uh, so we want to go back to 2019. So we'll use the option here, FY. So the first year of our data set so will be 2019. And we'll go back to October. So the first month will be month 10. And we'll get this from Yahoo. So we populated our data set here. And just to take a quick look at it, browse the data, this is going to be where we'll uh, have our focus. So the adjusted close is the level of the S&P at the end of the trading day, and we're going to turn that into daily returns. Right? So our first step there, we're going to generate a time trend. So generate T equals underscore little n. So that's just going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 250. Uh, now that we've told, nope, sorry, we generated it, then we go TS set T. So that tells Stata that that's how our observations are organized. Now we can use all of our time series uh, options and commands in Stata, uh, like lags, differences, and ARIMA estimation. So we're going to generate the return, so we'll call it RSP, the return on S&P, equals the, and this will just be the simple return, we could do the log return as well, uh, but we'll just go the difference, so D dot adjusted close divided by the lag L dot adjusted close. And just to get a, a visual here, this is the insanity, right, that we are going to be trying to uh, predict. So a nice big cluster of volatility in the middle. And basically this last observation here is going to be where we want to move on from. So with that said, let's go ahead and just jump right into estimating our model, right? So we're going to use the ARIMA command applied to RSP, but this is going to be the training data, right? So we're going to scale back that sample. So we'll run the ARIMA if our time trend is less than or equal to 250. So that preserves those last five observations. And then we specify the model. And I'm skipping over a whole bunch of work that we would have done here to come up with at least an idea of what the best model is going to be. But I'm going to run this as an ARMA 2.2. So ARIMA 2.0.2. So two lags of the autoregressive, two lags of the moving average, and the zero in the middle means we're not differencing, right? Because we're all, already created this as a return. We should verify this with the augmented Dickey Fuller test that it is stationary. It is, more or less, um, for our purposes, right? Uh, so we're going to leave that zero in the middle. So here is our training data model being estimated up to that period 250. So now we use the predict command. So we're going to create a new variable that is the fitted values, the predicted values from this model. Call it RSPF, the F for forecast, and underscore X post. And we are going to use the dynamic option starting at period 250, right? So that's going to take the, the lagged values, right? Use those to predict observation 251, use 251 to predict 252, et cetera. So now let's go to that data browser again. And all, so this new column here, the RSPF X post, these are all our predicted values. And these are all more or less in sample predictions. 
But these last five, 251 to 255, these are going to be all, again, dynamic out-of-sample forecasts. As far as the model is concerned, it thinks it's predicting the future. But the benefit is we have the actual outcomes here to compare to. So we could do something, just a simple TS line command where we would plot the RSP, the actual data, and the predicted values over that end range of the sample. So if, say, time is greater than, let's go back to 245, and let's put a line at 250, where the out-of-sample simulation begins. So we're kind of all over the map here. Uh, so this is all kind of in-sample forecasting. Here's where the dynamic forecast begins. So we have in blue the actual data here and our prediction in red here. So, hey, look at that. On the, the fifth day of the prediction, we, we almost nailed it exactly that there was that downturn at the end of the week. Don't bet any money on that, right? It's for entertainment purposes only. Uh, but that's what you would now want to evaluate. So this would be the ARMA 2.2. We would calculate, right, the say the sum of the squared deviations between the actual and the predicted values. Go back and run it as an ARMA 1.1, an ARMA 1.2, an ARMA 3.3. Keep adjusting the model, right, until we get that sum of squared differences minimized or whatever forecast evaluation tool you are relying on. But that is an ex post out of sample forecast. So now, here is the next step. Again, going back to our data set, our, the dimension of our data set here ends, again, the last available observation, where I am right now, October 2nd, and we want to be creating a forecast that can fill in values here for the next five observations. So we just need to extend this out. So going back to our command line here, we can use the command set obs, and we got to be a little bit careful here. We use the left single quote, set obs quote, equals underscore capital N, so capital N always represents the sample size, plus five, and then the right hand single quote, thusly. So that just tells data to add five empty spots at the end of the data set. Let's see how that works. So now we've got all the changes. We've got imp missing observations for everything for those five, those last five observations. Now before we can do the last step, we need to fill in our T, our time, kind of our time stamp, our time indicator here. So we could do that simply you could drop it and then regenerate it, but you can just replace it. So let's go replace T equals underscore little n. That'll overwrite those missing observations. And now our time goes up to 260. So now, imagining that that ARMA 2.2 was in fact the optimal specification, we simply go back and re-estimate it. Sorry. Bring back up the ARIMA command but we take out the time restriction. So ARIMA RSP, comma, ARIMA 202. So that'll take the estimation all the way to that last available piece of data, 255. And we let that maximum likelihood iterative process go. And here we have, again, and I didn't even really look at the first, <laughs> the first model, just wanted to get to the forecast, but we do see all four of those uh, lag coefficients are significant at 1%, so this is not a bad model right off the bat. So now, let's generate the ex-ante forward-looking out-of-sample forecast. So we again, it's exactly the same as before, we use our predict command, RSPF, but now let's append ex-ante so we know where this came from, and then the option dynamic, but now instead of starting at 250, we started at 255, right? So the last 
piece of information goes into it, and then the next forecast is, in reality, what's what the market's going to do on Monday morning, right? Because the last observation was Friday, October 2nd. Is that right? I think that's right. So we put in dynamic 255, and let's browse that data again. So here, look at that. We have, we have peered into the future. Right? So these observations are what our mo model predicts will happen over those last, those next days, right? And we don't have any values here to compare them to, so we just have to wait. But if your goal here is to generate a report that predicts market activity, right? maybe the, the culmination of that would be, uh, you know, just a, a simple plot, right? So we could do a TS line plot of RSP and the R, RXP forecast, the X anti forecast, just oh, and just observing the end of the sample, right? So say if time is greater than 245, here is at the end of our observable sample, and here's what our model predicts is going to happen next. Right? So wait and see how accurate that is. Uh, but again, a fun little exercise, uh, and if you ever tasked with generating forecasts or more likely optimizing a model, right? Well, in addition to right, looking for significance of coefficients, making sure your uh, residuals are random white noise processes, uh, and minimizing an information criterion, well, trying to optimize an ex post forecast is also a great way to make sure that you are using the most accurate estimation uh, possible, right? That your specification, your choice of lag structure, et cetera, is in fact optimal. So hopefully that was useful. Put any questions in the comments and we'll see you next time. Thanks.